In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. We'll focus on a passage from the Gospel according to John, the night of Jesus' crucifixion. Jesus knew all too well what he was about to experience. The pain, the torture, the suffering. What were his feelings? What idea was he occupied with? John 13, 1. Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come, that he should depart from this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. What kind of an introduction is this? Why not just say what he's going to do? Jesus is going to wash his disciples' feet. He tells them to do the same to one another, and that he is departing, and that this is the last lesson he's going to teach them. As I have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet, John 13, 14. However, before John tells us what happened this night, how he washed his disciples' feet, broke the bread, saying, This is my body, take, eat, all of you, how he stayed up all night at Gethsemane, how he was greatly distressed, how he was arrested there at Gethsemane, accused all night, abused, and nailed to the cross at Golgotha. How did the beginning of the night start? Knowing these are the last moments between him and his disciples and the last opportunity to meet and talk with his disciples, what was he focused on? John wrote, Jesus knew that his hour had come. His hour means the cross. It finally came, meaning it's the last night that he should depart from this world to the Father. So that's it. Jesus is leaving. Lord, you're leaving us? He says, did you get the message or not yet? What message? The message that I love you. And the Father loves you so much. That's the message Jesus, Jesus came to tell us. As you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world, that the love with which you loved me may be in them, and I in them. John seventeen twenty six. Jesus knew that his hour had come, that he should depart from this world to the Father. John 13, 1. So that's it. He's returning to the Father, and he wants to deliver the message, which is, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. Therefore, what is the philosophy of the cross? What is behind the cross? What is the reason for the cross? What is the secret behind Jesus' choice of the cross? What is the secret behind this grueling night? It's this, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The first thing St. Athanasius asked himself, why did Jesus choose the cross, specifically the cross? Couldn't he have just been beheaded and be done with it in a moment? Wouldn't any other means of death have been easier? The cross is terrifying. It's unbearably torturous and prolonged and disgraceful and humiliating and involves various forms of pain nails, thorns, stabs, blood dripping from every pore. Why? Why did he choose those things specifically? Because, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. When it says, to the end, this means the cross. Jesus, who knows everything and knows how to express his love, expressed his love in many different forms. He performed miracles, taught the people, served the people. He didn't sleep so he could give the people rest. He loved them in all their circumstances. He shared their pain. He shared their joy. He offered them all the love, but he didn't stop there. As if he felt the message still hadn't arrived, but it has to arrive. Jesus says, the people have to know that I love them without limits. For them to understand the meaning of I love them to the end, there is only one solution, one plan, for me to ascend onto the cross and show them what love is. That's why the saints have said that this scene was as if it was God's plan from eternity to express his love. That God, to whom is the glory, who created this entire world, comes at the very end in front of our very eyes with arms wide open to embrace. One could say, by force, nailed, so that no one could ever think he could close his arms in anybody's face. The magnitude of the price his open embrace cost him was extreme pain. However, he kept his arms wide open to embrace us 
to the end. For this reason, there is no icon of the cross with Jesus' hands down. It wouldn't be the cross. For the value of the cross lies in that scene with Jesus opening his arms to the end. This shows the meaning of he loved them to the end. Without conditions, without limits, above all times, for all generations, in every place, this saying continues, he loved them to the end. So the night began with that feeling. John the Beloved's heart feels for Jesus. His heart is close to Jesus. To relate to us how the night began, he tells us Jesus knew that his hour had come, that he should depart from this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. So the first concept is the cross is an expression of love, the most beautiful expression of love, the most important expression of love. God loved us by creating us. He loved us by making us in his image. He loved us by assembling our lives and making our affairs run smoothly. And he loved us by creating everything around us for the purpose of serving us. And every day he blesses. All of that is not enough. All of that does not express his love enough. He found another expression of love that is the one and only solution. Because of this, he tells his disciples, Look, guys, there is no greater love than this. Meaning, Jesus says, I will enter a competition with any love. I challenge any person who says, I love more. I will tell him, I love more than you. Why? What sign reveals this? The cross. Greater love has no one than this than to lay down one's life for his friends. John fifteen thirteen. The concept of the cross is the greatest expression of love because it is the only solution that lets God reveal his love to us. You'll notice that immediately after this mention of to the end, John, to show us the meaning of to the end, continues saying, And supper being ended, the devil having already put it into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. John 13, 2. This is something that should obstruct love. Any one of us would think, I will serve you, but if you are not going to appreciate it, forget it. However, Jesus, to whom is the glory, marches on toward the cross. And in these moments, he, he knows very well what is churning in Judas's heart. That is a conspiracy. Judas is selling him in, this, in the same moments when Jesus' heart is full of love without limits. To choose the cross, he knows one of his closest companions is, is selling him for a very cheap price. Jesus knows Judas is selling him, selling him out, but Jesus doesn't change his stance. All this is to bring to light the meaning of to the end. To let us understand that Jesus is telling us an important principle, which is, I love you no matter what you've done. I love you no matter what you've slandered. I love you despite all your suffering, all the slander, all the insults. Even if you betray me, I'll still go and be, de be crucified. If we were in Jesus' shoes, we would turn away from the cross early on. However, the cross wasn't too much for Jesus, though he knew about the betrayal. All the Jews betrayed Jesus as they are personified by Judas. And all, the, all of mankind betray him as they are personified by the Gentiles. And all will hurt him in the home of his beloved. And yet he did not turn away from the cross. He loved them to the end. Well, he knew what was churning in Judas's heart. Not only that, John gives us the background information inside Jesus to show us the greatness of the cross. John says, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, John 13, 3. This means Jesus knows very well, realizes very well, and is sure that everything is in his hands. Therefore we say, Lord, find another way. All circumstances are, are under your control. Everything is in your hands. You can do whatever you want. You possess heaven and earth. You possess time and space. You possess all the souls of mankind. You possess the devils and the angels. Everything is in your hands. So do something with it. Choose whatever you want. He knows that everything is in his hands and he still chooses the cross. Do you now understand the depth of to the end?
He loved them, though Judas is among them, and all people are Judas. He loves them while he possesses all things and can choose anything much easier than the cross, or look for a substitution to the cross, or escape from the cross by any means. And despite all of that, he proceeds to the cross. Because of this, the cross is the embodiment of love.